Hi everybody, welcome to today's Saturday session with exam revision. So this is for students sitting Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Maths and we're going to focus on a bit of algebra that I find students find particularly challenging. Okay, so we're going to look at algebraic fractions. Um, it is something that comes up regularly on the exam and in general it is a part of algebra that people tend not to do so well on. Okay, um, so we're going to focus in. There's a few different ways that it can come up. We're going to focus in on all of them. Um, and what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and show the similarities and that we can actually approach all the different questions with a similar method. OK, so what we're going to do in particular, we're going to divide it into two. So we are going to have the first section of this video where we're adding or subtracting fractions that have algebra somewhere in the numerator or the denominator. OK, so we're going to have X's or Y's or whatever letter they choose somewhere on the top or the bottom of the fraction. And we're going to be adding or subtracting them. OK, we'll see the way they can ask that. Um, it would probably say simplify or express as a single fraction, something along those lines. OK, then the second way algebraic fractions come up is when you're asked to solve for X. So solve for X means find X equal to a number. So that is slightly different, but we're going to have the same approach to both of these styles of questions. OK, again, these are the two most common ways um, an algebraic fraction can come up. And it is a very common exam question. Um, we will look at those then at the end, how it has come up, how it is likely to come up again in the future. OK, so before we get into the algebra, what we're going to do is we're just going to look at it if there was no algebra involved. This is something you would have done a lot of in primary school. And obviously now, if you were to do this, you could just put that straight into your calculator and write down the answer. No problem. However, if there was X's or Y's or whatever involved, your calculator won't be any use to you. So what we're going to do first, before things get overcomplicated, we're going to make sure we can do this without the algebra. And then we'll be applying the same rules when the algebra does kick in. OK, now we're just going to actually take a step further back from there and just say if I have two over five plus one over five. Now, I can add them no problem because the denominator or just to put it simply, the bottom of the fraction is the same. So two fifths plus one fifth, we have three fifths. OK, so add the top numbers, the bottom number stays the same. Now, that is fine in this case, but hopefully what you notice about the top one the bottom of our fractions aren't the same, so we can't just go ahead and add them. OK, what we need to do is we need to make the bottoms of the fractions the same. OK, so what I need to do, technically what we're looking for is the lowest common multiple here, but just an easier way to phrase it. What number can I make four and six into? OK, um, so I can make them both into a 12. So how would I go from four to 12? OK, you'd multiply by three. So whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do that to the top as well. So to go from four to 12, I multiplied by three. So we'll have to do the same thing to the top. So we have to do three multiplied by three, which is going to give me nine. OK, over here, then we went from six to 12. OK, how do you go from six to 12? You multiply by two. So then. What are we going to have to do to the 5? We will also have to multiply that by 2. So we are going to end up with 10. OK, now we have the bottom of the fractions the same. So what we can do, we can just add the tops. 9 plus 10 will be 19 all over 12. Now, just nice and quickly, the original question, can you type that into your calculator just to confirm that we do get that answer? So I'm going to put 3 over 4 plus 5 over 6 into my calculator and I get 19 over 12. OK, so when things get tougher now with algebra, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So master it first with numbers and then we're going to move on. And hopefully then the algebra won't cause as much difficulty. OK, now that is not going to come up when you're leaving cert. Um, they are going to have algebra in it. OK, but we're going to use the same thing. So we have two questions here, one on the left and one on the right, uh, one with addition and one with multiplication. So what we're going to do, we're going to do exactly the same thing here. OK, um, so what would the question say or how would the question be phrased? So how do you know when to do this method? OK, so the question could say simplify. Or it could say express. All right. 
us a single fraction. Okay, so that's just how your question would be phrased. So it could be either of those or a little variation or kind of a combination of the two. Um, that's what you're looking out for if you want, if you, that's what you're looking out for, um, for when to use this method. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to do the exact same thing. So I can see I have different numbers in the bottom. That doesn't work. So I'm going to change them both. We have the numbers 4 and 3. I can make those both into 12. Okay, now you'll notice you could also turn them both into 24, for example, because 4 and 3 will both divide into 24. But we're always looking for the smallest possible number. Okay, now something similar here. So to go from 4 to 12, we multiply by 3. So we're going to have to multiply this top by 3 as well. Okay, so it's going to be 3 multiplied by 5x minus 1. Same thing over the other side. So if you can work ahead of me and see what number we will have to put where. Okay, so to go from 3 to 12, you need to multiply by 4. So we're going to have to do the same thing to the top. Multiply that top by 4 as well. So it's going to be 4 by 2x minus 3. Now, when we have the bottoms of them the same, we're just going to write it out as a single fraction. Okay, so we're going to have 12 written once along the bottom. And I'm just going to write down what I had on top. And now all we have to do is we just have to multiply out that top line. So 3 by 5x will give me 15x. 3 by minus 1 minus 3. 4 by 2x will give me plus 8x. And 4 by minus 3 is minus 12. All to be divided by 12. Now keep simplifying that. 5x or 15x plus 8x will give me 23x. And minus 3 minus 12, if you're unsure about this, make sure you put it into calculator, will give you minus 15 all over 12. Okay, and that is your answer as simplified as you can get it. Now, just a few kind of common mistakes. Um, you might be looking at this and thinking, all this here when we're doing things kind of step by step is a bit excessive. OK, um, I promise you it is not here when I go from this line to this line. OK, you'll notice I don't multiply things out straight away. Um, this is a relatively straightforward question. There wasn't much of an issue with minus signs, plus signs. Um, but even when we get over here, if you don't include this step here where you just write it out kind of before you start multiplying out, people always go wrong with the signs, okay? Because people forget about this minus sign. So that's just my bit of advice there, okay? And uh, math teachers are often, we often sound like a broken record, but show your work. Every line you get, you have the chance of getting a few extra marks, okay? Um, another common mistake that people would make is they'd see this 12 and this 12 and they'd think they can cancel it out, okay? You're not allowed to do that. Um, so just keep an eye on that as well. Okay, your final answer there, 23x minus 15. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing over here. So what I want you doing is I want you constantly trying to work a step ahead of me. So figure out what number will go at the bottom. Okay, so we currently have a 2 and a 3, which are different. That won't work. What number can I make them so that we'll be able to subtract them? Okay, and I hope what you're saying is we can make them both a 6. OK, but by turning that into a six, what must we do? So to go from a two to a six, we multiply by three. So we're going to have to multiply all the top by three. And over here, then. To go from a three to a six, we multiply by two. So we're going to have to multiply the top line by 2 as well. OK, now we have two fractions there because they have the same thing on the bottom of both of them. We can just write it out um, once. So big long line, it's going to put a 6 on the bottom and it's going to be 3 by 3x plus 1 minus 2 by 7x minus 4. And now we can work at simplifying the top. So 3 multiplied by 3x will give me 9x. 
3 multiplied by 1 plus 3, minus 2 multiplied by 7x minus 14x, and minus 2 multiplied by 4, minus 4 would be plus 8. Divide it by 6, tidy that up a little bit, 9 minus 14, we have minus 5x plus 11 divided by 6. Okay, so two very similar examples there. Same method used for both of them. Um, just be careful with the minus sign. Okay, uh, what people tend to do in this line here, okay, they multiply 2 by 7. They might remember the minus sign the first time to give me minus 14x, but then people tend to forget about the minus sign there again. Okay, so just make sure um, by writing down this line, that minus sign is kind of included there in the middle. Um, and it's a bit harder to forget. Okay, so that's the first type of question. Has come up before um, and could potentially come up again. Okay, um, we're going to make it slightly harder now. So each one of these is going to get a little bit trickier. So our next type of one then, what we're going to do is we're going to see algebra on the bottom of our fraction. Okay, so here again, the question will be the same. So it will be right as a single fraction, simplify, express this as, as a single fraction or one fraction, something along those lines. Okay. Um, here, what you'll notice is we've algebra on the bottom. Okay. So what I was saying before, when we had say three and four at the bottom, we were trying to figure out what's the smallest multiple or the smallest number we can make three and four both into. Okay. That doesn't work for this. Okay. So when you have algebra on the bottom, we can't figure out what that number is. So what we do instead, okay, so I'm going to write two new fractions. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the both parts, so the both bottom bits on the bottom of each of them. Okay, so I just multiply this guy by this guy and pop that on the bottom of both fractions. Okay, I'm going to put what I had back on top as well. Okay, now we're actually going to use the same thought process here. So I had x on the bottom here. Okay, and that x suddenly became x minus 2, x multiplied by x minus 2. So if I multiply by x minus 2 on the bottom, we also need to put in an x minus 2 on the top. Okay, why? Because we multiplied this x by x minus 2. So we need to do the same thing to the top. Okay, similarly, at the right hand side, we had just an x minus 2. And that x minus 2 was multiplied by x. So we need to do the same thing to the top. Okay, so whatever appears new on the bottom, you need to pop that on the top as well. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing. Um, so we are going to write this as one fraction. Now the bottom looks a little messy. You can leave it the way it is there. There is no extra marks gotten for multiplying that out. You're actually better off not to multiply it out. Okay, and we're just going to write what we had on top again the same way. And then we'll start tidying it up. Okay, so multiply it out. 2 multiplied by x would be 2x. 2 multiplied by minus 2 is minus 4 plus 1x divided by x by x minus 2, which gives me 3x minus 4 by x bracket x minus 2. Okay, so I really hope there you can see the similarities between when we have a number on the bottom and when we have algebra on the bottom okay really the only difference is when there's algebra on the bottom you can't figure out what number will work so what you do is just multiply the two bits that are on the bottom by each other okay so what i'd suggest now just for the question on the right pause your video and see if you can do the exact same thing okay so again there's algebra on the bottom you can't figure out a number that will work for the bottom so what you need to do instead just put the two of them together on the bottom Okay, 
So if you're still working at it, pause the video and then recheck in with the video to make sure you have the right answer. Um, but I'm going to work our way through this here. So we are going to, on the bottom, we're going to put 2x plus 1 and x minus 4 minus Okay, so look at the first fraction. There was 2x plus 1 in the bottom. And suddenly this x minus 4 has appeared on the bottom. So we multiply the bottom by x minus 4. So you also need to multiply the top by x minus 4. Okay, similarly for over here, there was just x minus 4 in the bottom. And suddenly 2x plus 1 is also being multiplied on the bottom. So you need to pop that on top as well. Okay, now we're going to write it as a single fraction before we start doing any multiplying out, especially when there's that minus sign that people are prone to forgetting. So I think when you just do it this way, kind of a bit more step by step, you are less likely to forget it. Okay, and now multiply out the top. So it's going to be 2 by x, which would be 2x minus 8, uh, minus 3 by 2x will give me minus 6x, and minus 3 by 1 will give me minus 3. Divide it by... And simplify the top. 2x minus 6x is minus 4x. Minus 8 minus 3 will be minus 11. All over 2x plus 1. And x minus 4. Okay. Um, just be a little bit more careful. There's a few small extra mistakes tend to be made when they're being, when they're being subtracted. Um, another thing, just you're not getting any extra marks for multiplying out these two brackets. So don't waste your time doing it, basically. Okay. Unless they specifically ask for you to do it. Um, there is no extra marks to be gained for it. Okay, we're going to see more of these when we look at the exam questions at the end, but that is the second type of algebraic fraction that can come up. Okay, when you have algebra on the bottom. Okay, and I really hope you can see the similarity between what we did there when there's algebra on bottom and what we did when there was just a number on the bottom. Okay, now what we are moving on to next is solving. Okay, just going to move these down for a second. I'll just make a few notes. Okay, so these questions would say solve. Okay, now just what's important to know when a question says solve, that always means x equal to a number. Okay, now of course if the letter y was in your question it'd be y equal to a number we just happen to be dealing with x's here but solve is always the letter or the unknown equal to a number okay but what we're going to do is there's i'm going to show you how to do these with a similar approach to how we did the last ones um i know some textbooks um do a different approach you're going to get out the same answer either way okay so if you think you have a different way of doing this in class that works for you and that you can remember give that a go just to make sure you're getting out the same answer that i get out here and then you're perfectly fine okay but if you're stuck or if you don't know what way you did it in class um give this a go um just because it links in with the last method we did okay so again here we have two fractions and i can see i have a four in the bottom of one and the three on the bottom of the other okay now i'm not happy with that same as i was in the last ones even though here we're not adding or subtracting them i still want the same number on the bottom of my fractions OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change them both. So I think in my head, what number will work with four and a three? I can turn them both into twelves. Now, again, what do I multiply four by to get to twelve? I multiply by three. So we're going to multiply that top by three as well. Same with the other side. We went from three to twelve, which means multiplying by four. So we're going to have to multiply that top by four as well. OK, now, if you're getting the hang of this, obviously leave out the arrows. Um, but if you are stuck or just some people just like to include them, it kind of keeps them on track, gives their um, question kind of a nice structure, whatever suits you. Some people, they think that it overcomplicates it, um, whatever works. OK, now what you can see is we have 12 on the bottom of both of the fractions. We have the same thing on the bottom of both of them. So basically what we can do. You can say goodbye to the two of them. 
okay? That only works when we have the same thing on the bottom of our fractions, okay? Now, what is important, okay? I've essentially gotten rid of fractions there. If we just flick back, these questions said express as a single fraction. If I just got rid of this and got rid of this, number one, you'd be wrong because you're not allowed to do that when there isn't an equal to sign. Number two, then you're not left with a fraction as your answer, okay? And the whole point of that is to keep the fraction, okay? So that is the only thing people tend to get confused on. Um, if you were solving and you have an equal to sign, you can get rid of something if they're the same at the top and the bottom. Okay, so now what we're left with, we're just left with 3 by x plus 1 equal to 4 by x minus 1. Multiply this out. So it will be 3x plus 3 is equal to 4x minus 4. Okay, now from this point on, we're going down the road of solving. So rearranging things to get x on its own. If you are unsure of that, I'll go through it step by step here. But I would recommend doing some revision on that because it is going to catch you for all of these questions. Okay, so here we want x is at one side, y, or x is on one side, numbers at the other side. So I'm going to choose to get all my x at the left hand side. I usually do that just to kind of keep a bit of consistency. So we'll get rid of this 3 by subtracting 3 from both sides. So we get 3x is equal to 4x minus 7. Okay, now x is on one side, so get rid of that 4x by subtracting 4x from both sides. So we get minus 1x is equal to minus 7. Divide both sides by minus 1. We get x is equal to minus 7 divided by minus 1 will give me 7. Okay, and there is my answer. Um, so same first step, getting the bottom of the fraction the same. And then when you're solving, just ignore the bottom of the fractions. Okay, now what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to check my answer. So say I have a couple of minutes left at the end of my exam. Or if the question says verify your answer, you actually have to do this step to get your full marks. But unless it says that... OK, you're not getting any extra marks for this. So only do this if you have extra time at the end of your exam and you're wondering, OK, have I gotten full marks in this? I can do a quick two minute check and then I can confidently move on and try something else. OK, so what we're going to do is our check. OK, remember only now if you have extra time. OK, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sub my answer in. So we found that X is equal to seven. So instead of I'll just write down my question here. So everywhere there's an x sub in 7. Okay, 7 plus 1, you could actually just calculate 7 plus 1 is 8 divided by 4 is equal to 6 divided by 3. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2, which works out. Okay, if I got 3 is equal to 2, I would then know that this answer was wrong. Okay, but because it works, I can tell straight away, okay, probably have full marks for here provided I've shown all my work I can go on and I can go check another question or try something that you weren't able to do okay so also if the question says verify this is what they want you to do as well basically just sub in your answer now what we're going to do the next question over here looks a little bit more intimidating but what I want you to do pause the video and I want you to try it using exactly the same method okay so find a number that three four and two will all divide into OK, and then I want you to adjust the tops accordingly. So whatever you multiply the bottom by to get to whatever number, multiply the top by that as well. OK, in just a second, then I will start going through it. OK, so here I can see I have different numbers on the bottom of all of my fractions, OK, which straight away does not work. So we're going to have to change them all into something. So I have the numbers 3, 4 and 2. So I need to think what number can 3, 4 and 2 all divide into? And it's actually going to be 12 again. OK, now I'm going to just pop what I had back on top. So I had 3 on the bottom. That 3 suddenly became a 12. So we multiplied by 4. So we need to put a 4 there. Here I had 4 on the bottom. That 4 became a 12. So we multiplied by 3. So we need to pop a 3 up there. Okay. And then here this 2 became a 6 or became a 12. 
So there we need to multiply by 6. So we need to do the same thing here. Okay. Now, because we are solving, because there's an equal to sign, because we're looking for x equal to a number, we have the same thing on the bottom of all three of our fractions. So we can ignore them. Okay. Now we're just going to write out the top line. And now we're going to do some work with that, multiplying out our brackets and getting x on its own. Eight x plus three x would be eleven x. Minus four is equal to eighteen. What I can do here, I can plus four to both sides. Divide both sides by eleven. We get out x is equal to two. When you see an answer like that, when it's a nice whole number, you kind of feel like you're right. Um, not to say if you get out a decimal, that doesn't mean you're wrong either. Okay, or if you get out a fraction. What we're going to do, say we finished our exam with that few extra minutes at the end, I'm going to go back and I'm going to check my answer. Okay, so everywhere there's an x in my question, I'm going to sub in 2. So it'll be 2 by 2 minus 1 divided by 3 plus 2 divided by 4 is equal to 3 over 2. Now, what I'm going to do on my calculator, I'm actually going to sub all of this into my calculator. Okay, nice and carefully. Make it look exactly like it is there. And at this point then, just before you press the equal sign, you cross your fingers and hope. And yes, I get out 3 over 2. Is equal to 3 over 2. That won't change, which is correct. Therefore, x equal to 2 is the correct answer. Okay. Um, handy people like being able to check their work and just knowing if they're right obviously it's a little bit discouraging if you figured out your answer was wrong um, and then you ran out of time but remember there's so many attempt marks going for these questions okay you're first probably from coming from recognizing that you need to make 12 as the common denominator okay your next couple of marks then probably from for getting down to some line like this and your final marks then getting your answer okay so even if you don't get the right answer there are still lots and lots of attempt marks to be gotten from these questions Okay, that's the next type of solving done. And we have one more type left. But for the last type, we need to use the minus B formula. Okay, so we're going to do a very quick recap of the minus B formula just with these two questions. Okay, so recap of using the minus B formula. So I'm just going to write the minus B formula up here quickly. Remember, the minus B formula is actually printed on the front cover of your formula book, so you don't need to learn it off by heart. So it's X is equal to... minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a okay when do we use the minus b formula we use the minus b formula when we are um solving a quadratic so solving something with x squared x and a number um so what is a b and c a is the number in front of our x squared so here a is equal to one b is the number in front of our x which is minus seven and C is the number on its own, which is 12. Okay. Um, next, of course, what must we do? We must sub all of that into our formula. So X is equal to minus in the formula. And you're subbing in a minus 7. So there's going to be two minuses there beside each other. Plus minus square root of minus 7 squared. Minus 4 by 1 by 12 divided by 2 by 1. Okay, now, when I'm putting this into the calculator, I'm going to put it all in together. Um, obviously, you can't put in this plus minus. So for my first answer, I'm just going to pop a plus in front of the square root. And for my second answer, um, I'll just go up and I'll change that to a minus. Um, make sure the easiest way to do this is to press the fraction button first on your calculator. Okay, put it in exactly like it is there. All those brackets are all super important. Okay, and when I put in that plus, I get out x equal to 4 is my first answer. Remember, for any quadratic, you're going to end up with two answers. And then I'm just going to use the arrows to go back up, delete that plus, make it a minus. I get out x is equal to 3 for my second answer. 
Okay, so that's an example using the minus b formula. It's going to come up. It comes up in loads of places. Um, but it is going to come up in the last type of fraction questions just to make our life even more difficult. Um, but it can come up in its own as well, which is the good news. So it can come up as a nice straightforward question. So for example, in this 2020, it was question 5a and it was worth five marks. So what I'd recommend here, pausing the video and giving it a go. I'm going to do it out then um, very quickly in just now in a second. Okay, anytime you're using a formula, I'd write down the formula. Okay, and I'm going to write down what my A, B, and C is. So A is the number in front of X squared, which is 1. B is the number in front of X, which is minus 3. And C is the number on its own, which is minus 4. So we'll get that X is equal to minus minus 3. Plus minus square root minus 3 squared. The brackets around that there are super important. You will get out the wrong answer if you forget them. Okay, we're going to get our plus and we're going to get our minus. So plus is when we put the plus in front of the square root. The minus answer then is when we get our minus in front of the square root. So one answer again here is x is equal to 4. Then I'm going to go back up and just in front of the square root delete that plus and put a minus. Get out x is equal to minus 1. Okay, so I would be delighted if I saw that question come up in my leaving cert. I know it's only 5 marks, but it is a fairly handy 5 marks minus b formula. You need to know it for loads of other areas on your course anyway. So it's great when it comes up, I guess, in its simplest form. OK, so just a quick recap there of the minus my B formula, not necessarily a fraction question, but we will need to use it in these last probably the most difficult type of fraction questions. OK, so what you will notice here, OK, again, these questions will say solve. OK, um, what is the difference between these and the last ones? In the last type of solving or the first type of solving questions we did, I'm just going to flick back here, there was numbers on the bottom and we could figure out with 3, 4 and 2, we could figure out that 12 would work for all of those. Unfortunately, here we have algebra on the bottom and algebra, we cannot figure out what number would work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something kind of similar to what we did when we had algebra on the bottom of the other fractions earlier. OK, so on the bottom, we're just going to put everything multiplied by each other. So we're going to put x plus 3 x and 10. Same thing here, x plus 3, x and 10 is equal to x plus 3, x and 10. I'm just going to put what we had back on top. Now, we've changed the bottom of our fraction. So when we've changed the bottom of our fraction, we also need to do something to the top of the fraction. Okay. We had x plus 3 in the bottom here, okay? Now we have an x and a 10 that are brand new. So we multiplied the bottom by x and by 10. So we're going to have to multiply the top by x and by 10, okay? Here there was an x on the bottom. And to get to the next line, we multiplied that x by 10 and x plus 3. So we're going to have to multiply that top by x plus 3 and by 10. And here there was a 10 on the bottom. That 10 was multiplied by x and x plus 3. So we're going to have to put that on the top. OK, so that looks very complicated. Um, this is the hardest way that it can come up in the exam. Um, but as you, I hope you can see that the it is the same method, just with more letters and unfortunately harder algebra. So now we have the same thing on the bottom of all the fractions and we're solving. So we can just work with our top line. So I'm going to leave everything alone for a second. It's going to write it out the way it was. I'm 
Now, as you can see, in all of these things, we're multiplying three brackets by each other. The easiest thing to do is take the first two together, leave the last one, and then do that in a separate step. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to multiply one by x to give me one x. And we're still going to have the 10. We're going to multiply the one into that first bracket. So it'll be one x plus one by three will just give me three. And we will still have the 10. And here I'm going to multiply the 7 into that first bracket. So it's going to be 7x plus 21. And we still have the x. Now keep going. Keep tidying this up. So we're going to end up with 10x plus 10x plus 30 is equal to 7x squared plus 21x. Tidy it up a little bit. So there's a lot of algebra involved in this. So 20x plus 30 is equal to 7x squared plus 21x. Okay, now anytime I see x squared and x's and numbers in a question, I'm automatically thinking, okay, this is going to be a minus b formula question. For the minus b formula, what we need, we need everything at the same side of the equal to sign and in the right order. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this 7x squared from this side by subtracting it from that side. And we're also going to get rid of that 21x from that side by subtracting it there. So we will end up with minus 7x squared. 20 minus 21x will be minus 1x plus 30 is equal to 0. Now we are going straight into the minus b formula here. Um, I'm going to write it down just because in a question it's always best practice to write down whatever formula you are using. Um, I'm going to say a is equal to minus 7, b is equal to minus 1, and c is equal to 30. If you didn't rearrange this to get into the right order, your a, b's, and c's would be all messed up, okay? And you'd be unfortunately getting the wrong answer. So just make sure that um, you have it in the correct. So just sub it all in here. So it'll be minus minus 1 plus minus square root minus 1 to be squared minus 4 by minus 7 by 30 divided by 2 by minus 7. So we're going to get out two answers here. One when we have the plus in front of the square root, one when we have the minus. So nice and carefully into your calculator. And the numbers are a little bit awkward here. So I'm getting out an answer of minus 15 over 7 for 1. That's not a nice decimal, so leave it as fraction form unless they say to round your answer. And when I change that plus sign in front of the square root to a minus, I get out my other answer of x is equal to 2. Okay, so as you can see, there are quite a bit more work needed for these type of questions. They are definitely the hardest type of one. Okay, we're going to do one more of these before we look at the exam questions. So I'd really encourage you to give it a go, see how far you can get um exactly the same method so i'll leave that solution there on the left and it'll be exactly the same method okay so pause now give it a go and then resume the video to see how you got on okay so here again we're solving so our answer would be x equal to a number um we've different things in the bottom of our fractions there's algebra so we can't figure out a number that will work so we need to do um all the bottoms multiplied by each other. So I'm just going to rewrite this out. So 2x minus 3, x and 9. And I'm going to pop back up on top what I had. One. Okay, now... Obviously, I can't leave it like that because I've changed the bottoms and I haven't changed the tops. Okay, so in, there was just 2x minus 3. Now there's an x and a 9 on the bottom. So we're going to multiply this by x and by 9. Here we just had x in the bottom. Now we've also multiplied the bottom by 2x minus 3 and by 9. And here we just had a 9 at the bottom. We've multiplied the bottom by 2x minus 3 and by x. Okay, so basically whatever is new on the bottom, pop that on top as well. We're solving, we have all the bottoms the same. So we're just going to write down the top line again.
okay? And now we are back to relatively nice algebra, so just multiplying out brackets. Um, when there's three brackets again, just deal with the first two first and then do the second one in a new step. Okay, so it's going to be 4x times 9 minus, I'm going to multiply that 2 into the bracket, so it's going to be... Um, no, sorry, I'm actually going to get rid of... What is the easiest way to do this here? Um, so you see that minus sign there, okay? I'm actually going to multiply, leave that minus sign there, and I'm going to multiply the 2 by the 9, just because getting rid of the two numbers first is actually a little bit easier. So 2 by 9 will give me 18 by 2x minus 3. And then we have equal to um, 2x minus 3 by x. Okay. Um, that minus sign there is actually a little bit tricky because we have another minus sign here. So I just took the two numbers first and then we'll multiply the bracket in. Um, 4x by 9 will give me 36x. Now minus 18 by 2 gives me minus 36x. Minus 18 by minus 3 will give me plus 54 is equal to 2x squared minus 3x. Okay, what you'll notice here, these will actually cancel out and we're going to rearrange everything. I'm actually going to get out just minus 54 from both sides just because then we only have to move one thing. So we're going to get 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 54. Okay, again, we're left with a quadratic as we would expect for these type of questions and we are going um, multiply or writing down our minus b formula. And A is equal to 2, B is equal to minus 3, and C is equal to minus 54. So X is equal to minus minus 3, plus or minus square root of minus 3 squared, minus 4 by 2 by minus 54, divided by 2 by 2. Okay, and again, into your calculator. An answer of x is equal to 6 and then go up and change that to a minus sign to save you typing the whole thing again and I get x is equal to minus 9 over 2. Okay if you wanted to write that one as a fraction you could because it is a nice fraction or sorry as a decimal. Okay if you want to do a check um to see if your answers are correct, they both should work. So if you just sub them in up here separately, so do the x equal to six first, make sure that works, and then make sure your x is equal to minus nine over two, they both should work um, if your answers are correct. Okay, and the good news, that is as hard as they can get. Okay, they can't get any harder than that. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of the exam questions. Okay. So this was the 2020 question, um, part A of an uh, algebra question, and it said solve the equation. Okay, a few exam tips here. Anytime it says solve, I'm just going to make a little note. X is equal to something is what I'm looking for. We can see here we have algebraic fractions or we have fractions that involve algebra. There's numbers on bottom, so we can actually figure out what number is going to work for the bottom here. Okay, so I'd really suggest if you've um, kind of fairly good understanding, which I hope you do by now, um, pause this and give it a go. See how far you can get. If you get stuck, then um, unpause the video and see if you can get the next step from there. Then, Okay, so here, two, three and four in the bottom I want to make those all the same number. I can make them all 12. So we're going to make it. Okay, now I've changed the bottom, I have to change the top as well. So to go from 2 to 12, we multiplied by 6, so I need to pop a 6 out in front of that there. To go from 3 to 12, we multiplied by 4, so we need to multiply that top by 4 as well. And to go from 4 to 12, multiply by 3, so we need to multiply the top by 3. Because I'm solving, I have the same thing now on the bottom of all of my fractions. 
just work with the top. So it's going to be 6 by 9x minus 6 is equal to 4 by 3x minus 14 plus 3 by 9x. And now we'll start multiplying it out. 6 by 9x will give me 54x minus 36 is equal to 12x. 4 by minus 14 will give me minus 56 plus 27x. Okay. Um, I can tidy up that right hand side a little bit before I start moving things around. 12 plus 27 give me 39x minus 56. Okay, x is to one side, numbers to the other side, minus 39x from both sides. 54 minus 39 will give me 15x minus 36 is equal to minus 56. Um, x is to one side, we're going to plus 36 to both sides. So we get 15x is equal to minus 56 plus 36 is minus 20. Divide both sides by 15. We get x is equal to minus 4 over 3. Again, don't change that to a decimal because it is not a nice decimal. Now, when I get an answer like that or when students get an answer like that, you can kind of see them starting to worry. Okay. I'm going to do a very quick check here just to show how quick it is and I suppose then how reassuring it is that I know I can move on to the next part knowing I have kind of my full marks hopefully in my party. I'm going to work over here to the side and everywhere of an x we're going to sub in a minus 4 over 3. I'm going to put all that left into my calculator now, exactly the way it is there. And I get out minus 9 is equal to, and now I'm going to put all of this into my calculator nice and carefully. And I also get out minus 9. Okay, that's true. So then I know that this is correct. Okay, um, just bear in mind, you're not getting any extra marks for this. But just for peace of mind, it takes about a minute if you do have extra time. But only do it if you do have that extra bit of time. Okay, so that was the 2020 question. We are going to move on now to look at the 2019 question, which was extremely similar. Okay, again, solve for x. Give it a go. See how you get on. OK, I'm going to work through it and I'm going to, I suppose I'm going to work through it a little bit quicker now just because we're coming near the end of the video and I'm going to just not going to skip any steps, but I am going to show maybe how I'd write it out in an exam if I was confident with this. OK, first thing I can see in my head, the 5, 2 and 10, all different numbers. I can make those all 10. OK, so I'm going to rewrite my question. Okay, what did I change in the first part? So I went from 5 to 10. So really we need to multiply by 2 on top. And the second part I went from 2 to 10. So we need to multiply by 5 on the top. Third part then at the other side, the equal to sign, I didn't actually change the bottom. So I don't need to change the top. Now, solving, 10's all in the bottom. So I can ignore them. So we have 2 by 3x plus 1 is, um, sorry, plus 5 by x minus 2 is equal to 47. Multiply out 2 by 3, 6x. 2 by 1 plus 2 is equal to, or sorry, plus 5x minus 10 is equal to 47. We have 11x. 2 minus 10 is minus 8 is equal to 47. Okay, plus 8 to both sides. We get 11x is equal to 55. Divide both sides by 11. We get out x is equal to 5. Okay, so a really, really nice question there. That was 2019. So, so, so similar to the 2020 question. Okay, now the last question we are going to do is this 2018 question, which was a little bit trickier. Okay, the first clue that this is trickier, it said find the solutions. 
Okay, plural. We're going to end up with two solutions. Really, the only way in leaving search order and you love a maths, you get two solutions is when you use the minus B formula. Okay, um, so what we can see here, we've algebra on the bottom. We're looking to solve. Uh, we can't figure out a number that will work for the bottom. So what we need to do is we need to multiply all the bottom, all the bottoms by each other to figure out the lowest common multiple or the common denominator. So pop that five back on there. And then on the bottom, it'll be X plus three x and 2 minus and that minus sign later will cause a little bit of difficulty x plus 3 x and 2 okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to now adjust my tops so on the first one there was just x plus 3 on the bottom um, now that x, multi x plus 3 is being multiplied by x and 2, so we're going to pop those on top. Okay, next one, just an x on bottom. Now that x is being multiplied by x plus 3 and by 2. And similarly over here, there was just a 2. It's now being multiplied by x plus 3 and by x. We're solving with all the bottoms the same, so we can ignore them. And we're just going to work with the tops. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite the tops. Now, when I'm multiplying out this top the for or any of these, if there's two numbers, you may as well multiply them together first, just because they're a little bit more straightforward. So I'm going to multiply the 5 by the 2. That will give me 10 multiplied by x minus. Now I'm going to multiply the 2 by the 1, which will give me 2 by x plus 3 is equal to, um, and multiplying by 1 doesn't matter, so we'll just do x plus 3 by x. Okay, so we'll have 10x. Now just be careful, minus 2 multiplied by um, x will give me minus 2x and minus 2 multiplied by 3 will give me minus 6 is equal to x squared plus 3x. Tidy up the left hand side, 8x minus 6 is equal to x squared plus 3x. Now again I'm seeing x squared x's and numbers, get everything to the same side of the equal to sign. So um, get everything to the right hand side with well, minus x, 8x from both sides and we'll plus 6 to both sides as well. So we get zero is equal to x squared uh, three minus eight x, or sorry, three x minus eight x would be minus five x plus six. Okay, if you are unsure of kind of those algebra rules about rearranging, it is important to get um, to grips with that sooner rather than later because it will follow you down the line if you don't have a good grasp of that. Okay, this is the minus b formula question, so just jot down your formula. A is equal to 1, number in front of the x squared, B is equal to the number in front of the x, which is minus 5, and C is equal to 6. Sub those in. Into your calculator then to get your two answers, put the plus in front of the square root, and I get... One answer of x is equal to 3. And the other answer of x is equal to 2. Okay. Um, a really nice question there. Just don't get too bogged down with things about this. That's just saying x can't be minus 3 or 0. Um, if you did get one of those answers out, you would have to say not possible solution, but didn't happen there. So you can more or less just ignore that. Okay. So a very common question um the 2020 and 2019 ones were a little bit nice than the 2018 ones um it has come up in other years as well um before that um but that is all we're going to have time for today okay so i hope what we what you've taken from today that you can now add and subtract fractions with algebra on the top or the bottom or both and that you can solve for x with algebraic fractions and we got a little bit of revision of the minus b formula in there as well Okay, so thanks very much for listening. And if you do a bit of practice on these, you'll be able to make